The Sony Cine Alta Primes version 2 are as underrated as cinema lenses get. I'm really, really glad that we bought them. So what are they like and who are they for? If you want to know, you've come to the right place. Quick primer. For this video, I shot footage on an Arri Alexa in 2.8K RAW and 2K internal, Canon C74K RAW and R5C 8K RAW. I'll label all the shots throughout the video. I also got my hands on a set of Ultra Primes for a day, thanks to Mike at Location Equipment. Thanks, mate. So there's some side-by-sides across all the focal lengths and their timestamp below if you want to jump to them. With that said, let's get into it. So first, a brief rundown of the Cine Alta Prime's history. They got off to a rather bumpy start. Following on from their predecessors, the first version of the Cine Alta Prime's was a set of three, a 35, a 50, and an 85 designed for use primarily on the Sony F3. And although the optics may have been decent, I never used them, Sony got a lot of crap for the lenses being made of plastic. I think that that stained reputation did a disservice to these lenses and may be a key reason why they weren't more widely adopted and perhaps discontinued before their time. One other point, and I don't know this for sure, but supposedly a lot of former Konica Minolta engineers worked on designing these after Konica Minolta was acquired by Sony. The V2s began their life at a little over 20,000 US dollars for the set of six that dropped to 12,900 before they were then discontinued. We picked up our set in mint condition used for under $9,000 US. All right, let's talk specs. The six lens set comprises of 20, 25, 35, 50, 85, and 135, and was supposedly primarily developed for use with Sony's at the time new 4K F5 and F55 cameras. But of course, they're compatible with any PL mount Super 35 camera. They're Super 35, not full frame, but more of them cover full frame than not. I'll get to that later with some tests I did on our Canon R5C. They're T2 across the set, all of the same physical length, except the 135, which is slightly longer. Gears and lens rings are all in the same spot. They all have a nine blade iris. Focus rings rotate 240 degrees and they have a universal front diameter of 114 millimeter. Uh, they're color matched, far out, I love that. The close focus distance is 25 centimeters for the uh, 20 and 25, 50 centimeters for the 50, 85 centimeters for the 85, and the 135. Perhaps most importantly, unlike the three plastic Gen 1 lenses, these are tanks. They're made of metal and they're heavy, ranging from two to 2.4 kilograms. Yes, kilograms for the win. For those of you stuck in the old Imperial system, don't worry, you'll get there. We do. Mechanically, these lenses are outstanding. The first big corporate job that we used these on, our AC was very happy working with them. I was shooting on an easy rig with an Ursa G2 with a PL mount and it was just a breeze switching between lenses. Andy RAC kept gaping at just how clean and consistent the image up on the monitor was. You know, he loved the unified uh, lens sizes and gear locations and that certainly made his job easier than in the past when we've shot on city modded Zeiss ZFs. Uh, which are a mixed bag of physical size, lens gear locations and focus rotations. What really struck me is that when we change lenses, say from a 35 to a 50, that the look in terms of color and contrast felt kind of the same, just on a different focal length, if that makes sense. Made grading a much simpler process than working with modified stills lenses that aren't color matched. Uh, and if you wanna check out that video, the corporate production that I'm talking about. I'm not allowed to show you any of that footage here, so send me a DM and I'll, I'll send you the link uh, with some info of what's what. The obvious downside for these lenses is their size and weight. You know, they're not run and gun doco lenses, that's for damn sure, but I'll talk pros and cons, who I think these lenses would best serve and who shouldn't buy them at the end of the video. Right now, I wanna show you some footage, including some comparisons to the Zeiss Ultra Primes. I can't show client footage in this video, sorry. So to me, the look is clean, quite sharp, but not overly sharp or too contrasty. And what became obvious to me quickly was that they are very well color matched. 
They don't have an overtly obvious standout look or, or character, like a super expensive set of cooks or likers, nor are they as sharp and clinical as, say, the Sigmas. Good colour, nice, consistent contrast. The bokeh is more pronounced and I think beautiful on the Ultra Primes. It's really something special. On the Sonys, it's less pronounced. The bokeh shape isn't perfect wide open, but the bokeh's nice in a different way, like the out of focus areas. It's kind of softer and subtle. I still like it, but it's different. More painting-like maybe. You know, the image doesn't pop as much as the Ultra Primes. Maybe neutral is the best word, which is actually exactly what we were after in a city lens set. Not too much of a distinctive aesthetic that may be right for certain projects, but not others. We were chasing clean, neutral glass with great mechanics that we can use into the future on a variety of narrative productions uh, and documentaries, at least, you know, the interview component. Ultimately, that's where we're headed as a team, away from client-focused projects and towards producing our own original work. That's the three to five year plan anyway. And we chose to invest in a solid set of cinema lenses in-house that will serve that purpose. Of course, we have other lenses from Canon and Sigma uh, for branded content style work that are lighter, can autofocus and all that sort of stuff. Horses for courses, right? I should say we do need a wider lens than the 20. I wish they had a 14 or 16, so we're on the hunt for that lens. A few potential names we've thrown around are the Tekina Cine 11 to 20, a Sigma 14, or maybe Mica 16, I think it's a T2.5. Anyone used or have that? Price-wise, that one is in line, if a little cheaper than what we paid per lens for the Sonys. So look, if you have any suggestions for a wide in a sort of 14 to 16 range, let me know in the comments below. I'd love some input. Okay, let's talk about full frame coverage. Uh, these are marketed as S35 lenses, but to my delight, the 50, 85 and 135 all completely cover full frame 8K DCI on the Canon R5C. The 35 doesn't perfectly cover full frame DCI, but I'd give it a pass for 16.9 and for 2.39 to one. So essentially, you're getting almost four full frame lenses. The 20 and 25 are firmly S35 only lenses. So who would I recommend these for? Probably DPs that want to own a workhorse set that are happy shooting in S35. These would be at home on plenty of commercial, narrative or music video sets. The brand isn't going to impress anyone. They're not Zeiss or Ari or Cook or Leica, though they are big and expensive looking. But if you're predominantly working on shoots where you have an AC, you know, pulling focus, changing lenses, where you can put the camera down between takes or have an easy rig. It's in that shooting environment that these lenses belong. That and, you know, long kind of interview setups where the camera's on sticks or a dolly. If you work in or own a boutique production company, maybe like us, and make a variety of, of branded content or corporate and commercial work, you're buying these for a purpose. They're not your everyday, every week lenses where sometimes you're required to cover a heap of content in a very tight time frame. We don't generally use these in our common teams of two or even three. For those shoots, we're on the Canon C70 and R5Cs uh, using Canon RF lenses and a couple of Sigma Art lenses, light and fast. The Cine Altas would be for shoots where you're hiring in a larger crew with an AC, so TVCs, high-end corporate, music videos, your own personal original projects, and long-form interview setups. The point that I'm making is that they're not your do everything run and gun lenses. They're too heavy. Whoa! Hey, where did you find this? In a box under my seat. Are they heavy? Yeah. Then they're expensive, put them back. And not particularly single operator friendly with a 240 degree focus rotation. Yes, you could attach, you know, a follow focus like a nucleus, but if I'm the only one operating, I just want less to fiddle with and my, my hands on the lens. So you've got to justify the expense of these on top of your lighter lenses, potentially with autofocus, whether they be you know, from Sigma, from Canon, from Sony, whatever. I wouldn't own these without having a set of lighter lenses like those. For a dedicated DP, which I'm not, that may be a different story depending on your work and your market. I 100% highly recommend the Sony Cine Alta Primes V2 for narrative work and shooting interviews, providing your happy, content, 
and accelerated shooting in the Super 35 format. One disclaimer note, it's worth seeing if anyone in your area can service them. I'm in Perth, the most isolated capital city in the world, so that's a no for me. Also, as with buying anything used, I definitely recommend inspecting before making a purchase. I didn't with these, but have been fortunate they're in mint condition, and certainly you've got to weigh up buying used versus buying new. If you have any questions about the Cine Alta Primes V2, put them down in the comments. I will get back to you. And if you're still here, I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for watching and um, have a sensational day. Cheers.